In this video, I'm going to explore the six D's of exponential technologies. Now, this is a model that has been developed by some of the folks at Singularity University. Singularity University is actually a private think tank or educational institution that specializes in teaching executives how to think about the future of technology. I think this is a useful framework that we can use to understand current technologies and where new technologies may be taking us. If you want to learn more about the 60s of exponential technologies, I re highly recommend this excellent book called Bold. Um, there were two authors to this, um, Peter Diamandis and Stephen uh, Kotler. And uh, they both did an excellent job of explaining their model in that book, as well as talking about how to run successful Kickstarter campaigns. I think that's another very valuable part of that book. And I'll put a link to it uh, in the comments or in the uh, information about this video. So let's look at this model. Let's see if this is something that we can use to help us understand technology. The first D of this model is digitization. So as uh, Mr. Uh, Kotler says in uh, bold, a technology becomes exponential once it becomes digitized. It becomes represented in ones and zeros. Once that happens, it becomes an information-based technology and it hops on an exponential growth curve. Okay, so examples of this might be the digital camera. So once photographs became digital, um, that technology um, left the analog world of film and film paper and enlargers and all that kind of technology and became digital. Same thing with digital music and digital movies. And think about how those have disrupted entire industries. And are we starting to see that with digital money today? Is that where Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these other cryptocurrencies may be taking us? Maybe we're seeing the beginnings of digital money. The next D is deception. So this is a, once again a quote from Bold. It takes a while for these technologies to get up to speed. There's all this hype in the beginning and they fall into this deceptive period and people kind of dismiss them. Now, here's an example of why people might dismiss technologies, even though they're getting twice as good from maybe one year to the next or every two years. Think about it in terms of steps. If you go outside right now and you take 30 linear steps, so take 30 steps right in a row, you'll go about 30 yards, about 30 meters. Now take 30 exponential steps. So the first step you take is your normal stride. The second step is twice as long. The third step is twice as long as the second one. The fourth step is twice as long as the third one, so forth and so on. Now, if we were observing this from a satellite in space, it would seem like even though you were going what seems like great distances to you at the beginning, it wouldn't look like you're moving hardly at all. Okay? You're not making any progress. In fact, it seems very much um, like you're at the same place you started, uh, even though you're on this exponential growth curve. Now, that would change. It would take some time. But by the time you got to your 30th step, you're going to be going 13 times around the world. Okay, a fairly significant difference. Okay, and so we do have this long period of deception and then these technologies kind of break through. They use the example of the digital camera that was in the 70s that Kodak had the first digital camera and it didn't uh, really break through uh, until much later, right? So it was about 20 or 30 years later that um, digital photography was integrated into phones and it basically obliterated those businesses and companies such as Kodak. So uh, that's the next step when these uh, there is some time and uh, that exponential technology uh, works its magic and we have this very disruptive phase. So these technologies then play a significant role in subverting established industries. 
Examples might be Uber disrupting the taxi cab industry today, Netflix disrupting the movie rental industry, HD camera phones, and Instagram disrupting Kodak and other film manufacturers. The fourth D is demonetization. So at that point, a lot of the money kind of gets driven out of whatever um, medium we're talking about here. So this is again another couple of quotes we're going to look at from that book, Bold. For example, once you could store digital images on a camera, film was totally demonetized and suddenly nobody was buying film rolls anymore. So the money comes out of the equation. The next D is dematerialization. So in this case, we um, have gone from that demonetization where we were buying a small camera uh, and it took great pictures. Um, maybe the camera cost a couple hundred dollars, but we didn't have to buy film anymore, uh, taking the vast majority of the expense out of photography. But now we don't even really carry around separate cameras, right? Only for specialized use. Um, so our cameras our GPS systems, all that has gotten amalgamated into our cell phones, these other devices we carry around, and sometimes we actually make phone calls with them. Okay, So the technology itself is disappearing. Nobody is going out and buying cameras anymore because it becomes part of your smartphone. And the last step here is democratization. Okay, In other words, access becomes available to everyone. Just about everybody on the planet has the ability to have access to some sort of phone that is going to provide services such as the digital camera. may not be the best in the world, but um, it's certainly not the worst, and it certainly provides access that people wouldn't have otherwise had uh, decades ago. So these are the six D's of exponential technologies and I think they do provide a good model for understanding how sometimes it takes quite a while from the time that a technology is originally invented or becomes digitized to where it really becomes fully democratized. So in the next video we're going to look at some of the drivers of exponential growth, why things do um, grow exponentially, especially when it comes to technology and why they're probably going to continue to do so for quite some time. And uh, if you want to watch that next video, you can click and do so. Uh, this is kind of a little mini series on understanding technology. Uh, and that's the next one in the sequence. And you can, of course, subscribe to this channel if you want to get more great videos like this. Thanks.